What up, fam? My man. Oh, let me put that cash app down there just because. I will never forget to put. Oh, they won't let me make no comments. Oh, well. My man wanted me to talk to how I felt about women talking to their ex in a relationship. Well, men and women. I think it's a good thing. Especially for women. Most women gonna talk to their ex. And I'm gonna explain why I think a man shouldn't be mad. We're gonna let the beat build. Y'all let the beat build. This is a love discussion. This is about relationships. Like I said, my man has contracted me to talk on this subject. Y'all can share this. We ain't gonna do no cussing. We're gonna have a little fun, cool conversation. We're gonna bring some people in. Uh, this is Sage. Sage. We don't smoke reefer no more. I stopped smoking reefer. I only smoke sage. I only smoke sage. I don't smoke marijuana no more. I had to give up that narcotic. But uh, as the beat bill, yeah. Why you mad she talking to her ex? That don't mean they having sex. That's just mean he up next. That's just mean she ready to flex. You fuck up. He's waiting in the wing. You know to do the things that you won't do or you can't do. Just that's still her fucking boo. Hey, man, let's talk about it for a minute. She gonna be with that nigga from the beginning to the ending. They gotta love that it'll ever, ever, ever be finished. All right, let's talk about it. Most women are going to talk to their exes. It's actually a good thing. It's a covering. It shows that she's not as much of a whore as you put her out to be. Women like to remain in contact with their exes and not block their exes because their exes are normally their motivators for their next step, next level in life. Women won't go and lose weight until they get broke up. Once a woman lose weight, get broke up with, oh, she'll hit the gym to show her ex. Now, we're going to talk about why it's okay and why a man shouldn't worry about a woman talking to uh, her ex. Because she's always going to communicate with her ex. And then we're going to discuss a man communicating with his ex. He's always going to communicate with his ex. I don't understand how people want people to not do the things that they know. What up, uh, Keisha? Keisha? It says, Kanique Monique, okay, oh, they the twins, the sisters. They just had this subject. Women talk to their ex because men are covering. Women, I don't befriend any exes. That's something I stand on. Okay, Courtney D, that's a good thing. But I don't expect no woman to just come on in here and say, yeah, we talk to our ex. We stay in contact with our ex. But I will ask the question. Women always got four guys in their pocketbook, four or five guys in their pocketbook. I understand this because I understand women. Women always got four guys and they five guys in their pocketbook. That's their covering. Their exes or the guys they used to date, that's their covering. Because we live in a world where women need a covering. Women need to know if anything goes on in my life, I have this covering. This person will change my tires. This person will loan me some money. This person will take my son to the barbershop. This person will give me uh, good advice about my new relationship. He's an ex because at one time they really liked each other. I'm going to see, can I bring Kanique in? Hey, Kanique, or, well, I don't know. They might not be able to come in. I just wanted to be an interesting show. I want to know what, what did what the sisters, but what did they say? How did they come on this conversation? How does this conversation come up? Uh, my man hit me up, and he tagged me into a conversation talking about the ex, and that's why he paid me to do this video. But uh, Kanique or Keisha, if you could come in and just give your take on it. I know y'all sisters, y'all some beautiful sisters, but y'all shy, you know, or whatever. Uh, if you can come in and just tell me what was the basis of that conversation and how that conversation came about. I'm trying to add Keisha now. It won't let me add her. So let me try to add Kani Monique. 
she would have let me add her. I just want to know what the conversation uh, was deemed around. Why are two sisters talking about this? And is this a big thing going on? Okay. What's up, Kani? Hey. What's up? What's up? How did this conversation, if you don't mind, how did this guy, is this something that's happening on social media? Is it a social media topic? Or is it some? I can't say it was personal experience or not because you know, I wanted y'all to divulge too much information. But speak on this conversation. <laughs> well, it was, um, it is, and a personal experience. Y'all, excuse me, I just woke up going to get my cup of coffee. It is a personal experience. Um, we were just being real with each other, you know. Um, you know, in the, um, over the summer, you know, I had, you know, me and, a, you know, somebody I was kicking it with, you know, we had a separation, a breakup, and, you know, we decided to still be friends, and now, I don't be friends with, you know, all my ex, just certain ones, you know, certain ones, you know, yeah, this one four has of them. <laughs> four of them. Yeah, the four that, that, uh, speak on the covering that I, that I explained. Yeah. I want a woman to explain. Explain to me why you stay in contact with certain exes. Break it down for the world. Because a lot of men are fucking stupid. A lot of men just fucking stupid and don't get shit. I'm the woman whisperer. I understand women. I want women to speak their truth. I've been teaching women and educating women. So explain what this covering is when you say you continue to stay in contact with certain exes, not all of them. Um, like you said, we do need certain exes for certain things. Just like recently, this past Sunday, I had a mouse to get in my house. I'm going through my roller desk. Let's see which one I can call. Who, who gonna be tough enough to come here and get this mouse? You know what I'm saying? And you know, the one I thought I could call, he wasn't available. So you, I went to work that same day asking me and I work with, hey, are you scared of mouses? Are you scared of mouses? I just need a maintenance man. Like you we gonna get you to say mice though. I know y'all from Kentucky, y'all country. We gonna get you to say mice though. We ain't gonna let you keep saying mouses on here. Go ahead though. I'm fucking with you. You know I'm fucking with you. And then like I need some time for my car. I had another one, you know. He's not an ex, but we are friends. I had she broke up. Facebook don't want that good truth. Facebook don't, I'm going to remove her because she broke up and then I'm going to try to get her back in because she was saying some good stuff. She was saying some good stuff. Facebook froze. Maybe she's driving through a bad area. I'm going to try to bring her back in. She's explaining. And I don't have to explain this shit. I'm the one, women will tell us. So you broke up, but go ahead. You said one about the mouses in the house and fucking with you. And then you needed some tires on your car. Go ahead, talk to me. Yeah, so, you know, I had one reach out, you know, hey, I know I need you some, you know, ties in a low low. Okay, you know, we, we, we don't we don't necessarily be sleeping with these men. We just have them, you know, hey, on backup. If we just cause we need them for some man shit that we can't do, you know what I'm saying? You, you A woman gonna need a man for more than one thing in a, on, or another. So, let's be real about it. Keeping them on backup the way that you, that you keep them on backup is y'all had a good relationship. Mm -hmm. For some reason, it went sour. Mm -hmm. Normally, it's about somebody fucking around. And the older <laughs> you get, you realize, damn, I done broke up with this good situation. I fucked around on him, too. He fucked around. We all do <laughs> shit like this when we're younger. And you realize, damn, this could have been a good situation. They might be in a new situation with a woman. Uh -huh. You might be in a new situation with a woman. Uh, one of my uh, wife's uh, niggas that she used to date called her and asked her to do his children's hair, his daughter's hair. Mm -hmm. She asked me, could she go over there and do his hair? I said, I don't give a fuck. Because mm -hmm. if I want one of my exes or need them for something, right. you got damn right I'm going to call them. So it's an understanding, right. but that understanding with those exes, you do know the reason they come through for you is hopefully you're going to break down and give them some yes, push again one yes, day, right? Yes, yes. I know that in the back of my head, you know, even though, like, like for instance, one of them, we hadn't, um, we hadn't had sex in over a year. But I know in the back of his mind, one day he's wishing, he's hoping, you know. But it's up to me to keep my boundaries, you know. what I'm saying, but I ain't stupid. I know in the back of their head, you know, if they, if I gave them the opportunity, they would take it. And you don't see that as leading him on, do you? No. 
Because deep down in your heart and soul, you know if the situation is too dire and if the need is too strong, you will give him some pussy to make sure he come through. Yeah, if you know, if 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 Ooh, I, if, 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 if y'all, hey, look, y'all get this. I want everybody to put a one in the timeline. <laughs> just put a one in the timeline for her being real. This woman just said she have exes or friends she used to deal with that she can call on, that she know for a fact mm -hmm. the reason they show up for her mm -hmm. is not for love, mm -hmm. it's not for anything other than fact that they can get their hands on that light-skinned ass again <laughs> with that brown stripe down the middle. We all know what them light-skinned girls look like from the back. It's like with them cheeks closed and them brown, you know. So that's what they hoping for. Oh. Now, you said Depending on the situation, say for example, if you need some tires, mm -hmm. do so I can get you some tires on the Lolo. That's him just doing a favor to stay in the uh, Rolex. Right, but right. if you was about to get put out or needed your mortgage or rent paid, something where you might have needed a nigga to get on the road and help you move mm -hmm. or give you two, three bands. You know, when that situation, that nigga gonna want some pussy and he gonna yeah. say it up front. Yeah. And you know, you just yeah. admit it. You know, depending on the situation, mm -hmm. you would get that pussy up, right? Uh huh. The now, pussy, yeah. let me explain something to men that men don't know that I understand about women. It's better that women are like this. This woman is really keeping those four or five guys as her covering because mm -hmm. when she don't have a man, this woman ovulates every month. She gonna want to fuck. She would rather fuck one of those exes that she's used yeah. to mm -hmm. than meeting a new guy. Mm -hmm. See, the only reason the exes are exes, people aren't bad people to each nah. other. Black people just think cheating is, a, is such a bad thing when everybody does it. Mm -hmm. See, this woman is basically sitting here being honest and telling the truth that depending on the situation, he can get some pussy. But it's certain times in her head, she like, nigga, this ain't enough for you mm -mm, to get no pussy. Mm -mm. Now, <laughs> if he do you four or five small favors over the course of three, four months, that could add up to yeah, a big favor yeah. and get some pussy. <laughs> the yeah. guy that did the four or five favors, small favors, over the course of the last month, when this woman ovulate, I want you to explain to these people how it feels for a woman to ovulate and be in fucking heat. Explain to these people. My God, it is funny you ask me because I, I just went through this um, yesterday. You know, I was ovulating and, you know, I did. That means you probably still <laughs> ovulating. You ain't slime me on the phone, is you? Go ahead, I'm fucking with you. I just went through this yesterday and I was like, and I just, and I texted my sister this yesterday and she can attest to. I was like, God damn, it's one particular ex I'm waiting to hit me, waiting for him to hit me up, because I'm going to get him that pussy. But, you know, I ended up seeing one of my exes yesterday, and I was like, damn, the other one needed, the one I want need to hit me up, because I'm horny in the motherfucker. I don't want to give this joke alone, you know what I'm saying? I, a woman knows who she want to give it to. And, and, and tell them some extra why you won't call the one that you really want to <laughs> fuck. To explain why you won't call him. Well, we're going to talk, we're talking real. Well, because you know, I, I I'm just, I guess I, I I want well I want him to want me. So long as it was once he hit me up, be like, hey, you know, woo 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 woo. In my head, I'll be like, yes, he wants me still. Notice she said this in my head because mm -hmm. as men, we will call all our bitches a night we horny and whoever let us come through. Mm -hmm. What she's saying is. She likes that man so much and he fucks her so good yes. that she feels weak and like a little child baby to call him and ask him for some dick, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and the reason you feel weak and child baby is to call him and ask him for some dick because he a masculine man that won't let you act and play how you fuck you want to play. Right. So he'll tell you. He told you, I know how this goes, because mm -hmm. I, I have women that I have did this to. I tell them, look, you don't run shit with me. Mm -hmm. You don't run shit right, with me. Right. And that man normally has a woman, and he's committed. It ain't that she don't want to seem pressed, because she called the other nigga. That she seemed pressed to him. 
it's who she don't want seen press to. Right. Mm. It's just like this. I can only explain it in my situation in my life. I've had women that told me, I can't deal with this no more, Javon. You married or you a polygamist or for whatever, whatever. Mm -hmm. Or try to run shit. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, okay, fuck you. You ain't got to fuck with me no more. And then I went. I said, you will call. That dick still on me. That's what I say. I went to him. And that arrogance, that arrogance, when I when I said, well, look, baby, it's all good. We ain't got to talk no more. Or you got a man now you're trying to do right. But hey, what? Guess what? You gonna hit me again? Mm -hmm. That dick is in your soul. <laughs> so they don't want to call me. Oh my God, they don't want to call me. <laughs> but every man did when they can't take it no motherfucking uh -huh. more, and they need that fucking that they know they need, and they just need my presence. Mm. They just need Javon around them. They break down and call me. When they call me, they I say hello. They say, hey, before you even go, I know, I know. <laughs> it's like they they like, <laughs> you said it, and I know, you're right. These niggas uh -huh. out here ain't shit, mm -hmm. whatever. I say, hey, baby, you ain't got to explain. Come on mm -hmm. home. I know you coming home. I'm that ex. Uh -huh. I'm that guy that's that ex. I call it the Billy Bob. The Billy Bob. The Billy Bob <laughs> is, is the guy that can always fuck your woman. Every woman has a guy that she'll fuck for the rest of her life. Mm -hmm. And every man has women. Am I lying? Nah. <laughs> Married women too. I'm that guy. I'm that guy that your bitch will fuck doing homecoming in the bathroom of the dorm while you outside on the grill. I'm mm -hmm. that guy that your bitch, I'm that guy. So mm -hmm. I know this is a fact. I'm, I'm that guy. And no, it's not that I'm so cool. A lot of guys are that guy for some women. And you're that woman from some guys. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. some guys that you can call on. They could be in the bed with their motherfucking wife. They'll hop up and come change your tire. That's just how the game go. Yeah. You better be lucky that your bitch got a guy like that to call and she ain't out here getting new dick all the time. Right. And right. I don't understand. It's a psychology in the black community. This is what I want to discuss. In the black community, we're so braggadocious and bravado and machismo about toting guns. We mm -hmm. fuck bitches. We all do our, our women got lashes, nails. Our women showing their ass, their titties. Why are we so dishonest about how much of a fucking whore we all are? Right. We 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 so on. I get it out the mud. I kill a motherfucker. I fight a bitch. Blah blah blah. But when it comes down to looking up and say, hey. You a motherfucking whore just like me, sweetheart. Yeah. Who you fooling? Mm -hmm. And women hate that I can tell them, bitch, you a whore. Mm -hmm. And I'm a whoremonger. Mm -hmm. Now let's do the let's be whores right. and whoremongers together. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, when you get to my age and my status, meaning my status ain't my status, it's my it's women on here right now wanna fuck me just because I'm saying mm -hmm. what's true. Right. Right now, it's it's women right now that's saying. I'd love to fuck him because he sure know exactly what time it is. <laughs> the shit that I'm scared to say, the shit that I won't never admit, uh, he sure know that when Billy Bob called me, no matter what I'm doing, I feel good. Mm -hmm. You feel happy that that guy called you. And if your period on, you might go suck his dick just because he called you. Wow. Just because <laughs> you feel it makes you feel good about yourself yeah. when the nigga that don't want you hit you up. Ain't that the right. truth? Right, yes, yes. It is that's, that's the truth. Mm -hmm. And that's a woman's mind. And I want to help free them for that. Mm -hmm. Because what we're doing is we're at the barber shop saying, hey, uh, man, I'm going to call Kanika. That pussy was good, boy. That bitch, da 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 da. And we like, yeah. After we stopped fucking around, she went to the gym. She was at the gym posting gym pics. Lost twenty <laughs> pounds. That's really her. She doing all that shit for the world. She done turned uh, to a fitness consultant. She doing meal prep. She's showing you the vegan meals. All she doing is say, hey, Billy Bob, look at me. Do you want this pussy again? Yeah. And everybody can see through that shit. Yeah. Only the real G's that can, though. Yeah. But the yeah. other women can see through that shit. Yeah. And, and, and it's funny. Why niggas so mad if she call her ex? 
that's somebody she been fucking. Hopefully he careful and safe with his dick. Yes. If she give her ex some pussy, yeah. he's going to fuck wrong. Oh yeah, yeah. Because he done had him before. Because he done had him once before. Of course. So. And, and, and we don't care what they've been doing since we've been. Yes. We just figure. Hey, I got to have the skin on skin. Uh -huh. You are you are very honest and truthful. And it's people that's looking at this like, she, she, and they doing the same motherfucking thing. Mm -hmm. That's the problem with the black community. And I've been saying polygamy is the only way that's going to save us. Mm -hmm. All these single mothers have children. Yes. Y'all need to be fucking with the G's, mm -hmm. meaning the guys, like the guy said, top G. Y'all mm -hmm. need to be fucking with the guy that you know that you can call on who right. has that covering over your head right. and make but that's the one you're so afraid to deal with ain't that some shit that is some shit <laughs> so y'all are called ashy larry because <laughs> ashy larry is like what ashy larry is a dick in a glass he wants the pussy so bad anytime you call him he gonna come oh i'm here oh, oh. the guy like me I'm like, hey, I'm chilling with my daughter. I ain't finna drive no hour to see you. I ain't finna da 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 da. Hell no, you can't see me when you get ready. So it's part of rejection too. Yes, yes, that yeah. part right there. See, when you finally break down, and we just gonna use my name and your name for the sake of it, mm -hmm. just for the fuck okay. off of it. We gonna use my name and your name. When I, how you say your name? I always say Kane. 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 When Kane break down and call Javon. She knows Javon is gonna rub it in her motherfucking face. Uh -huh. <laughs> you know I'm gonna rub it in your motherfucking face. Yeah. Oh, I thought you had went off and got married and got. Uh -huh. Oh, I thought you couldn't do this. I can't do this. I'm gonna rub it in your motherfucking mm -hmm. face. Yeah. You're not gonna be able to call me when you can. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna spend the night. By the time you come out the bathroom trying to be nice with a hot rag to wipe me off, I'm already dressed. <laughs> Just to show you. You ain't finna get no this old girl. So you know how that's gonna go. Yes. In the very same way, men are in that position with women. Ooh. There, there, there might be one woman, one woman that I drop what I'm fucking doing. Mm -hmm. And I created bears and bubbles based off her. So you know the story behind that. Yes. That bitch called me. <laughs> I'm dropping what I'm doing. <laughs> And that ain't got nothing to do with fucking. Right. If she called me just to say, hey, I want to sit across from the table and have a dinner with you. Right. I'm going. We yeah. don't understand that some of our exes help grow us into yes. adults. Mm -hmm. I told my wife when I first got with my wife, I told her, I said, uh, if I ever blow, I would take care of my ex for the rest of her life. How you feel about that? She was like, y'all ain't got no kids together. I said, look, if you can't deal with me talking to my ex and seeing her when I need to, you mm -hmm. can step now. Because, bitch, the man that I am, the nigga that you like, yes. the masculine man, the clean, neat nigga that I am, she helped raise me into that. Right. So you better not fix right. your motherfucking mouth to say nothing about my motherfucking ex. Right. Actually, you better be motherfucking happy. And, I, and they'll sit down and talk. And I, I had them sit down and talk together. Okay, okay. You need to talk to my ex. She can teach you some shit. Mm -hmm. She can teach you some shit about me. She can say, yeah, girl, da 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 da, -da. And she'll look across from you and say, and if I want to fuck him, I can. <laughs> so you don't need to have to go through no stupid foolishness. Yeah. So when, when I ain't going to say her name, when she called me, you could just say, go and have a good time with her. Go on, y'all do y'all thing. When I come back with a smile on my face, I'm going to be so happy from fucking. I'm going to make you a steak. <laughs> Baby, I'm going to come in the house singing. Oh, I didn't be with my ex. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Baby, you want some meat? You want some slops and shrimp? She gave me a couple of dollars. She sent me a little a card for you. That's funny. You see what I'm saying? Uh -huh. So I want, I want you to break down for men right now. How you don't see that as a whore? Why you don't see nothing bad about keeping these exes as a covering? I mean, I don't see anything bad because, you know, women, we need to be covered. I personally, I love to be covered and we need to be covered. So by me being a single woman, um, you know, I have my ex-husband, you know, as a covering, but, you know, by us, 
not being together, me not giving him no pussy, of course he don't cover me, you know, how I need to be covered. So that's why I have other, you know, exes, you know, that I call, you know, because my ex husband only would do so much, you know. So, you know, the other ones, you know, I call, like I said, I haven't been with them in over a year, but they still have the hopes. So I don't yeah. see anything wrong with it. If I was to get on some pussy, I don't see anything wrong with it um, because I am. Because you grown and that's your yeah. pussy, right? Yeah, and it's my yeah. ass and I take care of it, you know. And, um, you know, every once a month we do get an itch and it need to be scratched. Not saying that, you know, I don't have discipline because I do, you know what I'm saying? Like I said, I'm still waiting on that one. There's no need to have discipline when your body is itching. That's like my motherfucking back itching. I said, I'm going to be disciplined. I ain't gonna, I'm going to yeah, be disciplined. Yeah, I ain't going to eat. Yeah. i give you a perfect example of how the world are. People don't admit the truth that we're admitting because when they can't do it or when they're not happy doing it, they want you to discredit. I'll give you a perfect example. One of my wife's best friends fell out with her when Lynn moved in. All right, Lynn, Lynn, Lynn was my second wife. She moved back to Texas. Uh -huh. My mom and dad got sick. She needed to help take care of them, right? Mm -hmm. I can't hold her from doing that. But one of her best friends for over 20 years, sitting in her chair crying, why would you let him let another woman move in? <laughs> she crying, trying to convince my wife that I'm fooling her and that my wife is stupid for letting another woman move in. And my wife is like, yo, I'm going to be with this nigga regardless. Wow. I wouldn't care what the fuck he do. Mm -hmm. And I'd rather the bitch be here because I know what's going on and we can all go get medically checked and all this shit. Right. right? So I happen to hear them talking. I go in there. I said, now you didn't talk to me about a nigga beating your motherfucking ass that you ain't going to leave. And my wife ain't sitting there trying to convince you to right. leave that nigga. What we don't understand is people are going to do what they want to do until they don't want to do it anymore. That's true. So what it is is this. What she saw in my wife was a level of commitment and submission mm -hmm. that she could not do herself. Mm -hmm. So she's telling my wife, you're wrong. You shouldn't allow your husband to do that because she know deep down in her heart, in order for me to have the high quality, good masculine man like I want, mm -hmm. I'ma have to share that Peter Whacker. <laughs> you gonna share that Peter Whacker. Yeah. If yeah. you got a man that handle business, take care of you, mm -hmm. and take care of the family, he gonna share that Peter Whacker. Yeah. It's, it's crazy for me <clears throat> for somebody to say, as a woman, I want a Prince Charming. Yeah. Well, bitch, everybody <laughs> wants Prince Charles. <laughs> everybody. He, I, Prince Charles standing around saying, I'm going to fuck everything and do what I want right. to do anyway. Right. When he find one that he want to lay down with every night and be with, we worried about the wrong thing. It's like we get in our car and we put gas in the motherfucker and then we say, let me check the oil. All right. You didn't put gas and check the oil. Let me check the alternator. When you gonna crank the motherfucker up and drive and live life? Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? You sitting at the car, you can't get in the car checking everything you worried about. We can't be in a relationship because we checking phone, we checking everything we worried about. Uh huh. That don't mean shit. All the while we doing the exact same motherfucking thing. I'm gonna ask you a question, and I can't. I don't want to be too personal, but be real. Mm -hmm. you, you don't have to answer it. Ain't you cheated on every nigga you ever been with in your life? Except my ex-husband. When I was married, I didn't cheat. Okay, I, I there you respect, go. Yeah, I respected him enough not to give his pussy away because he had that mentality, don't give my pussy away. Okay, I can respect you enough not to give your pussy away. Well, before I yeah. get married, yeah. Every nigga ever. <laughs> I don't understand why people don't realize as humans, the best two things on this earth is fucking and food. Mm -hmm. And they're the only two things that's necessary to survive. So there's an innate drive in human existence to eat and to fuck. Mm -hmm. If motherfuckers stop eating, the world would die. If yeah. motherfuckers stop fucking, the world would die. If people stop getting married, the world wouldn't die. That's true. Even fucking is a biological thing that has to happen. And for some reason, Eating and fucking are the two things that we're the most insecure about. I don't want to eat too much. I done got fat. 
I need to eat more, I'm skinny. Mm -hmm. I need to control how I eat. I need to, if your mama would have controlled how you fuck, you wouldn't be here. Was your mom and daddy married when you were born? No. Okay, so mama gave that pussy up to somebody and we got two beautiful twins <laughs> yeah. out in the world. <laughs> yeah. Now why is you gonna turn around and act like you motherfucking different? Right. You was born by mama out here home. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So why you gonna act like you any motherfucking different? Hey, can I be real for 2.5 seconds? My own auntie, when I first got married, you know, became a woman, you know, my own auntie sat down with me and she was like, she just broke down, you know, the family, you know, what was going on in the family? She was like, your great grandmama's a hoe, your grandmama's a hoe, I'm a hoe, and since your mama don't want to tell it, she was a hoe. I mean, she was just being real, you know? Yeah! Just being real, you know, everybody want to keep it all secret, you know, what grandma did, what mama did, you know, but my auntie did finally, you know, it's like, hey, let me bring it down to, you know, how we roll, us Anderson's roll, you know, and what type of pussy we got, and power, and... And that's when I found out, you know, oh, okay. Hey, know. hey look, hey, where y'all from? It's a saying. If you can get your hand on one of them goddamn Anderson girls. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's how my mamas and sisters are, them plumber girls. Boy, if you get your hand on one of them goddamn plumber girls. I done had niggas say shit in front of me as a little kid. Don't drink the water from, don't drink the water down there on plumber land. <laughs> don't drink the water. My family own their own land, so it's a lot of land and everybody live down there, so we call it the bottom. Mm -hmm. Niggas talking about my mom and my aunts right in front of me thinking I don't understand. Boy, don't drink the water down in that bottom. Mm -hmm. <laughs> don't fuck with them girls. Your ass gonna be hooked. Yeah. <laughs> I want somebody to put up the definition of a succubus. Real quick, just somebody do that for me. Since we talking, since we talking, uh, I'm gonna bring somebody else in. Uh, Kane, Kane, okay. I appreciate okay. you for being honest. If you wanna come in and join this uh live, just say something. Uh, raise your hand. I don't know what the fuck to do. Uh, but I want I want somebody to put up the definition of succubus. Succubus. S u c c u b u s. Succubus. Put up the definition for a succubus. There you go, Taz Valencia. You just, she knew it offhand. She said a female sex demon. That's the one that says she throw a pussy up in the air and it turn the sunshine. That's the one that can suck your dick and make you nut real fast. That's the one that know how to bend her ass over real and look back at you with that triangle on her back. You know how you cock a shotgun and that ass she that's that's the succubus. She is skilled in the art of seduction. But I want somebody to put up a formal definition up for it. A succubus. It's a term the church created uh when men would lose everything they got. Like Samson. Samson, how did you disobey the laws of God and, and lose everything? He said the succubus got me. Succubus, a demon or supernatural entity and folklore and female form that appears in dreams to seduce men, usually through sexual activity. I'm the youngest of eight, four baby daddies, so that man know what time it is. So a succubus is a woman that just got that thing. Somebody put up a incubus for me. Succubus and an incubus. Somebody put up incubus for me. Somebody put up the definition of incubus for me. We're going to play the beat real quick. Y'all know my cash app is the master teacher. Uh, Facebook won't even let me put my goddamn cash app up that motherfucker no more. Somebody put up the definition for an incubus, a succubus and an incubus. Put up these definitions for me. A woman is going to always talk to their ex. You understand that? Your woman got three exes that will do anything she need them to do. And if you fuck up, she's going to go back and fuck with one of them because she don't want to start all over with no new shit. A woman would rather her friends say, girl, you fucking with Craig again. Thank you, Hop. Let me pin that motherfucker. He put that bitch up. Let me pin that motherfucker. <laughs> Thank you. See, that's a brother. Hey, man, sometime when a brother just got them coming through for you. Uh, that woman is fucking with two guys. 
when you break up with her, a woman, is, is there any woman who's willing to come in or a brother that's going to come in and talk about it or a brother who don't mind a woman talking to their ex or a brother that may have broke up with a woman for talking to their ex? Anybody, let's just make it live more cooler uh, when somebody come in and we can rap. Does anybody want to raise their hand and come in? Your woman, CC Bamcock, says, I will. CC, you don't have the uh, the camera up over your head. And Incubus, thank you, Jennifer Webb. I'm going to hit you up. Jennifer, you're so sweet. And Incubus is a demon in male form and folklore that seeks to have sexual intercourse with sleeping women. The corresponding spirit in the female is a succubus. So an Incubus is just a guy that know how to slang that dick. He know how to get to the bottom of that pussy, move that dick around. A guy that said, man, she ain't had no walls, he's not an Incubus. He's not an Incubus. An Incubus is a man that just has great sexual prowess. Your woman may have dated an incubus in the past. He's gonna have power over her for the rest of her natural born fucking life. Your nigga may have dated a succubus in the past. She's gonna have sexual power over him for the rest of their natural born life. Now watch this, let's be real. We're gonna do this for men. Oh, we got somebody that's trying to come in. Let me see. Okay, CC Bamcock. The person is unable to join because of technical issues. Let me see, can I invite her? I'm gonna add her, see what it said. CC, you got technical issues. You might need to go out and come back in. Uh, Aubrey, let me go outside right quick, I'll jump in. Aubrey LeRae, let's come in here, sister. We just have, what we're trying to do is level the playing field. We are gonna weed out all the weak people. You already know, uh, my homeboy, I'm gonna tell you a quick message. Uh, my homeboy sent me some yesterday, and uh, one of my former chicks is killing the game. She's destroying the world. She's she's out here doing big things, and she's in the spotlight. And 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 she was speaking at this event, and my homeboy sent me a copy of the picture, and a uh, copy of the video. And he said, boy, look at that woman up there on that stage with all that sense and accountability, talking that modern masculine talk. He said, man, you're the whole slayer woman maker. He said, you're the whole slayer woman maker. I'm not going to say no names. I don't want to say no names. <laughs> that nigga done threw that shit up there. He said, you're a whole slayer woman maker. When he said whole slayer woman maker, he literally was saying, boy, you a fucker, bitch and take her from her Shug Avery stages, because all of us, all y'all just Shug Avery's right now. Women are Shug Avery's until they get turned into women. Only men can teach women how to be women. Men teach women how to be women. So he said, boy, you the whole slayer woman maker. He said, boy, you fuck them women and put that knowledge in their head, and before you know it, they a goddamn woman. And I watched them. OK, CC, let's see. Can we bring you in there? OK, it said we add you. Uh, I got married women that'll tell you, oh, yeah, this nigga right here got there made me a woman. I'm the whole slayer woman maker. I've been making women women on Facebook for years. What's up, Cece? Talk to us, sister. First of all, before before we have, a lot of times people like to oppose me. I'm going to start doing something different. You're very beautiful, too, sister. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to start having my sisters come in and just give their testimony first on what have I been to their life through Facebook. So you start with that for me. Oh, my God. You have basically changed my whole life completely from the first day I saw you. You was talking about the Mexicans that moved next door to you. That's what hooked yeah. you all to. My husband even know you are. My husband know your voice by heart. He's like, you was talking to that man again? Yeah. Go to bed. Leave me alone. You taught me how to be a woman. You taught me how to be not be emotional. Like, if it is what it is. Let it go. Let it fly. I don't give a damn no more. I used to be a drama queen. I used to just be, like, all over the place. Now, I don't give a damn. My family think I'm going through a midlife crisis because I'm happy. I'm not going through a midlife crisis. I just don't have to deal with their bullshit no more. <laughs> so I'm going to put this on my YouTube. So in other words, before you met me, you was your typical woman. Couldn't yep. control your emotions. Yep. Couldn't communicate. Couldn't help it. If 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 you have a situation where you ask your husband a question after work, you know he not gonna respond. 
you still ask him just so he won't respond so you can say, you don't never talk to me. Yeah, now. That was like, you. It does, it's, see, like, none of that stuff don't matter no more. I learned how to just be peaceful. We have the best relationship in the world now because I'm peaceful. I was the riot. <laughs> I was the riot. What you doing? Who you with? Why you not talking to me? Why you not around me? When nationality, I didn't want none of that. I was just trying to control him. I just wanted him to be all mad. He he never gonna be all mad because he the type of man that everybody wants. So it's like, go ahead. But I know he coming back here because he know what he got and I know what I got. It don't even matter no more. Who cares? You just said some key shit that 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 women say all the time. And I'll give you an example. I'm a polygamist. She went out. I'm gonna see, can I hey CC come? My husband might have snatched the goddamn get you goddamn. I'm just I'm just playing. CC, send the message back uh, to come back in and cut you off. I'm going to give you a perfect example of women wanting to be men and control men. As a man, as a male, all right, let, let me give you the example right quick. As a male, I believe in polygamy, polyandry. I believe that women can do that too. But because a man can have two, three women in one house, a woman said, why can't I have two, three men? It's not because possible. you can't. It's not possible. Because you can't. You can't get one man to commit to you. Nope, it's not possible. We, um, you can have four men. You got to get one first. So, and all that, that'll be a BV cesspool. Them men ain't fucking no woman. Uh, with no, that, that pussy will be full of dead semen and worms and shit. So women will complain about wanting things just for male privilege, penis envy. It's like, I'll give you a perfect example, then I'm going to come back to you. Baseball. I want to go to the baseball game. Men playing baseball, going to the game on Sundays, having a good time. America's pastime. The women want to go. No, it's a sport. It's for men. No. Okay, fuck it. We'll let y'all go. They turned it to where you're wearing suits and shit and being pretty to women having pocketbook competitions. After they done got out there and watched, now they want to play. Yep. Well, we can't hit as far as y'all. Can you move the fence in some? We can't hit the fast ball. Can you give us a fatter ball? Can you throw it upside down? Can you give us a metal bat? Can you do whatever you need to do to lower the playing field for us? So what you were saying is, I'm saying all that to really reiterate the point said, you wanted to know what he was doing with all this shit, and you ain't even want that motherfucker in your face at all. You were just doing it to fuck with him. <laughs> Cuts. I'll give you one more example. I'll give you one more example, then you got the floor. One of my, uh, I do one-on-ones -on with people. I don't call them, it's reflective discourse. One of the sisters I was doing a one-on-one -on -one with, she was like, and every time he come home, he drinking every day, drinking liquor every day, drinking beer every day, sweating all over me, and I don't want this, and I don't want that, and I don't want this, and I don't want that, coming in the room, taking all the day to nut, because he drunk, falling asleep, dick getting soft in me. I hate having sex with the motherfucker. And then, like, two minutes later, she was like, I been going through his phone because I want to know he ain't cheating. To I said, sister, <laughs> you just said you don't want that sweaty alcoholic get soft dick. Mm -hmm. She just bust out laughing. She was like, wow. I said, that's reflective discourse. I'm saying back to you. You just want to fucking complain. He's sweating, the dick going soft, it take too long to nut, he smell like being liquor. I don't want that motherfucker climbing on top of me. Yep. And the next breath, oh, when is he cheating? So sister, you got the floor. I want, I, I want you to uh, say whatever you want to say at this point. I can just basically tell all women, because this is, this is actually my second marriage. My first marriage, I ended my first marriage. Um, if I knew then what I knew now, I would never end in my first marriage because all my children were from my first marriage. Um, my second marriage, I went in different. I went in with a different approach. My husband taught me how to be a woman. Um, he taught me how to not be disruptive, angry, aggressive. You know, my second husband is when I found my femininity because I knew he wasn't going for that shit and I wanted him. So I had to change my whole perspective of the, what I had to change myself of what type of man I wanted and what type of woman I had to become to get that man. And when I did that, my life was so much better. My life was so much easier. I don't, my job really is nothing, but I don't do nothing. When I complain, I work like a dog. 
mad, I don't complain, I don't do nothing. But sit up and be like, okay, yep, that's cool. Okay. And make TikToks, make TikToks all day with them goddamn jugs sitting up. I'd be like, God damn, she hey, got damn I work beat. hard for this body. I work out five days a week. <laughs> that motherfucker got, hey look, and I'm gonna be honest, I'm not even a titty guy. I, I've never been a titty guy. <laughs> but you got a mean set of motherfucking titties. I, hey, I know, I don't mean to say it, I forgot you was married. Let me stop tripping. <laughs> hey nigga, I'm just admiring your taste, nigga. I'm admiring your taste, brother. Uh, But what we have to understand is, is this. Can you speak on how when you know you're not qualified for something, you will hate what you're not qualified. Meaning when you're not qualified to get a quality man, you're going to fuck with ain't shit niggas that you above. Yeah. Explain to women the psyche behind that because you're a married woman. This is your second marriage. You're beautiful. You got plants in your house. So I know any woman that take care of plants, wash her ass. I have, That's all I, <laughs> I have 30 plants. I spend a lot yeah. of money. I love plants. <laughs> but yeah. One thing I learned about women, if women got plants and natural hair, I know they wash their ass, they clean. Uh, I'm serious. I'm serious. If a woman pussy ball, that motherfucker is being used heavily. It's ready to fuck at all times. Never at any shave. time, Never a nigga shave. might call. Never shave. Yeah. Never shave. Never had anything going on. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and if a woman walk around with matching up bra and drawers, she'll fuck at the drop of a dime. That woman that'll get up and put on a blue bra with a pink pair of drawers, she ain't fucking at the drop of a dime because her pride going to say, ooh, I want to fuck, but you know what? I can't let this nigga see me with these goddamn mismatch regular ass drawers on. But that woman that got that pussy ball and matching them bra and drawers every day, oh, you can fuck her behind the Walmart. You be like, hey, damn, you got on a goddamn SpongeBob pajamas. I done bent you over your drawers, match your bra, and your pussy perfectly ball. Yeah. I don't think women understand what we understand about them, but they know everybody. I want to ask you a question, and this is a serious question. Okay. Why do women know what everybody know and know what everybody think about it and still goddamn deny what the truth is. Because I'll um, give you an example. Being a single mother is hard. Everybody knows this. Why do they you get it? I can give you so many examples. Shaving your pussy ball, not your hair not being natural. Why do our women I want to cause you you why do our women it's almost like you can look at a black woman and say, hey, you got on some white pants at the white party. I see blood on your ass cheek right where your pussy at. I think your period on, baby. You need up to, and she'll say, no, I sat down in some ketchup and go keep dancing. That's the joke of it. But what is up with that? Because women, basically, a lot of women are delusional, and a lot of women, they put this facade on to make people think this is something that they really not. They want everybody to think that they're perfect, but they're not. But it's like, baby girl, how can you be perfect when you're mocking the lady next to you or you in competition with somebody who looks exactly like you? Like I always, like I told my daughter the other day, she's a very beautiful lady, but she want to look like and be like everybody else. I said, be yourself. What's wrong with yourself? She say, I don't like myself because everybody like what everybody else likes. But I was like, but if you was different, you would get more attention. And the sad thing is, we think everybody like what everybody else like but because as me, but, but and look, and I'm trying to tell women, and I want to tell little girls, the reason us men like those pictures and shit, cause them bitches gonna fuck yep. quick. Yep. That's what I tell her. I was like, you you just gonna be another ass. You're not gonna. You're not gonna never get what you're looking for because you are the masses. You have to not be the masses. When you stop being becoming the masses, then you become that person. But you still will not become that person as long as you not. You can't get out of your own head. Meaning, like, you will never be the only one when you want the type of man that you want. I don't give a damn what you do, how you do it, how much um. You try to beautify yourself. You just have to realize that you will never be the only one. And once we can comprehend that, then we'll be able to be friends again. That's why we can't be friends because we because don't when you think that about we'll it, be the only one. <laughs> being unique, right? So, say for example, in being unique, you're sitting here, no makeup, beautiful. You got your eyebrows. Uh, you know, you do what you do with you, but you're so beautiful. 
gap in your teeth. Can't nobody on this motherfucking earth look like you. Nope. I don't want them to. <laughs> Unique. Can't nobody on this fucking planet look like you. Now, you're going to tell me you're going to take that face and who you are, put some weave in your hair, some lashes, contour your face, and then be looking like everybody else. And it's I look at it like this. It's like saying, I'm a zebra born with black and white stripes. Mm -hmm. I'm going to paint my stripes red, green, and yellow, and I'm going to put some spots on my body. And then walk around and parade myself around and say, I look better than a natural born motherfucking zebra. Yes. Now, what make a nigga think a bitch that'll do that not going to keep contact with her goddamn exes? All my exes that I keep in contact with serve a purpose. And, I, and my husband, know of, I, all of them, I know of all his exes. I don't give a damn. They better have something to contribute to this marriage. I don't give a damn if, if she's sucking your dick. That better be her contribute. I ain't got to suck it now. We got two bitches sucking your dick. She better be contributing. She better have. She better be contributing to this roof or he better know how to put a roof in. He just ain't chilling, just getting pussy, nigga. You serve a purpose. And once we figure that out, then it's, hey, it's, it is what it is. We just, we're too So what crazy. do you say to the, what do you say to the woman that say you're desperate and you're stupid for feeling like that? Um, I would tell her I feel sorry for her because um, she will always forever be sad. She will always forever be miserable because she will continue to keep searching for something that she would never have. Because I don't give a damn who it is. Any high value man I have ever ran into, have ever dealt with, um, they have women. They, they, they have options. I'm just another option. Either I deal with it or I don't. It all depends on how bad I wanted that man. And it all depends and on. And not it. only are you an option, you you you're who he chose. Exactly, I'm who he chose, and I my, my motto was I don't give a damn what you're doing. I give a damn what you're doing when you're with me at that time. When you walk out the door, I don't care. That's none of my business. That goes for my husband too. When you walk out that door, what you do is none of my business, as long as it doesn't affect me directly. I don't now, care. I I ain't gonna get too much in your business. You could just kind of fake wink. Any woman who feels like that will get her her dick on the side whenever she get ready. Will yeah. she? I hey, just I'm said fake wig bitch, like. I sure will. Wait, he gonna get his pussy on the side? I don't say nothing. I I encourage it. Fuck that bitch. She gave it to you. Why not? Now let me ask you something. For since the beginning of time, this is, has been the mentality that married women have always had. Married, taking care of, kept women have always understood this. Yeah. And granddaddy has always understood that grandma going to get her lick back when she get ready. <laughs> this is an understanding of marriage. I want you to speak on this. All right. I want you to speak on this. I say all the time, if you want to be in a committed relationship, marriage or relationship, you're going to spend 90% of your time doing not shit together. Nope. Find somebody you don't mind being bored with. Now, yep. watch this. I'm going to just ask you this. Who is the last person on earth you want to have sex with? Honestly? Um, the nigga that I see from time to time. Okay. All right. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Real. Yeah. I and it's, and like, like, once, and like once every six months. And like like Kani was saying, it's because he that nigga nigga that you hate to have to break down and call. Yeah, right? I hate to call that nigga, but it has to happen. <laughs> it has to happen. How them girls, how them kids used to do that shit back in the day? <laughs> Seriously, I'd be like, motherfucker, damn, I gotta call this nigga. Hey, boo, what you doing? Is your, is your wife out of town? Okay, I want to see you. <laughs> hey, hey, listen. Hey, listen. Like, you know what's so hard for me? This is so real. Because we got single women that will always be by themselves, that will die alone, never have a relationship, who's saying you crazy, who is actually doing the very same thing, fucking an ain't shit nigga that ain't paying the bills, taking care of her, and she's still on the goddamn wait list. Speak on that for me. 
Oh man, let me tell you something. I just bought um I'm I'm not gonna tell you where I work at, but because I don't want people coming up to my job. But anyway. Hey, hold that hand up. That's a big motherfucking rock right there, husband. And put a hold that rock up. Ah, how many cash is that? <laughs> it's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, and look, she's like, don't set you know me up, the, nigga. You know, when I married my husband, it was crazy because my husband was like, I knew you want shit. He was like, but I wanted you. And I was like, he's like, it don't matter now because I got you. And he was like, because, and I was like, well, why did you wait on me? He was like, because I seen something in you and I seen the potential in you that you didn't see in yourself. And that's why I married that nigga. Like, damn, you hey. seen something in me that I didn't even see in myself. Your husband is like me, the whole slayer woman creator. God, what? Don't get me wrong. I kill a bitch over my husband. Like I'm like saying, like if you like you out here in the streets, like I had to have him get rid of one of his bitches because she wasn't acting right. She was fucking up the kingdom. You know, acting crazy in the street. I'm like, she got to go. She got Not to go. Not you put the eyes on her like. Yeah, she <laughs> got to go. We ain't got time for this drama, bitch. If you know. We if he he can help you pay a little bill, help you little take care of your little regular kids, but you need to act right. If not, you got to go. Cause you won't get my, this dick no more. Look, my yeah. wife has one cardinal sin. You better not spend a motherfucking red penny on a motherfucking woman. I see, I don't give a fuck about that because money comes and goes and we're well off. I mean, I feel now I am like this. If you can go out and fuck a bitch and put your dick in her and do all of that, the least you can do is help her pay a bill if, if you doing it consistently. Now, if you ain't just out here just fucking random, no, it's quid pro quo. But if she's somebody you doing it on a daily basis with, you need to pay your dues every now and then. So look, so what you're saying is you rather your husband be fucking around with two, three quality women that add to the kingdom than out here randomly just fucking. Exactly. Exactly. Because the quality bitches is going to be going to help us build this kingdom, nigga. Now, hey, men, it's easy to find a, a plethora of women. It's hard to find a good quality man that's going to take care of the kingdom, that's going to worry about his women, that ain't going to let nothing happen. And when you find that, it's time to take care of the king. Now, bitches out here that's nilly willy, we don't want them. They gonna destroy the kingdom. Them bitches gonna bring in STDs and other niggas that wanna kill the king. We can't have that. <laughs> Cause they have no respect. They have they they have no empathy. We need bitches with empathy. You hear? Ain't nobody got time for that. <laughs> Boy, <laughs> you are scared. But you know what? The more and the more older we get, I look at it like, yo, this woman right here. Is women saying you're a pick me? They saying all these words. You sitting here with a fucking seven carat ring on, plants in the house, happy. You're gonna. You, I know you got fucking life insurance. You gonna if your husband got sick, you will wipe his ass, vice versa. And they fucking with niggas that wouldn't even come by them a fucking sandwich during COVID and looking down on you. Good God Almighty, what's wrong with us? I got <laughs> niggas. I I got niggas that because I don't mind what my wife do. My mm -hmm. wife can fuck off if she want to. But if you really fucking your wife good, she fucking off with a nigga for some shit that I ain't. See, my wife will fuck off with a nigga on me because it's a nigga that looks up to her. Not whether he older or younger. It's just the fact that my wife is so sharp from being my wife. Mm -hmm. You get it. So when she meet a nigga, he be like, wow, how are you so smart? And she can help him talk about his little dreams and manifest his dreams and build up the nigga. That's what she like. She like the fact that these niggas that she like look at her like she a guru or some shit. Yeah, ain't nothing like it. Ain't nothing taking, it ain't, I don't understand women. Ain't nothing, I used to get niggas that didn't have shit before I met my husband and build them up. I literally enjoy watching niggas like, be great. Like, come on, let me help you be great. Why you want to be a bum all your life? But I want to let you be great for the next bitch because I don't want you, but I'm going to help you. I'm going to help you. I don't mind. You, you and our generation have a lot of women that I call Suge Avery type women. Meaning Suge Avery grew up in church with her daddy. Yeah. She's got mm -hmm. all the foundation. She's got all of the understanding. But she just a fucking succubus. She the type of chick, she fine, she got that swagger, she can sing. She gonna shake that shimmy and enjoy the men that want her. 
But Suge Avery going to come around in the end and get married and be a good woman that know how to suck good fuck. I'm the type of nigga, I said, they say you can't turn a hoe into a housewife. Uh, I'm the type of nigga that's like, <laughs> give me a hoe. Give me a hoe, bitch. Because all, all y'all hoes, that's what I don't understand. These niggas think they got a pure woman. In our generation, man, ain't nobody pure. So I take a woman like Suge Avery because a woman like Suge Avery, you know, I'm a, I'm a masculine man. So every now, hey, leave me the fuck alone, goddammit. Yeah. And a, a dainty church girl, that a, ah! You know what I'm saying? I need a woman that understand, goddamn, hey, look, I got my master's degrees. I got shit going. Goddamn, you my woman. If we get stopped with this, I ain't going to have nothing on me but some weed. <laughs> That's your goddamn weed. Yeah. My wife or any woman I know, if you with me, we get stopped with that weed, you going to jail for that weed, not me. <laughs> exactly. That's how it's supposed to be. And I'm going to tell you why. People don't understand this. My wife, if I went to jail, my wife would lose her fucking mind. She wouldn't know how to get a bondsman, none of that shit. If my wife went to jail for some weed or some shit or drunk driving and we going to switch seats, I might have my wife out of jail and goddamn an hour and a half. My Even wife know that ultimately, no matter what, between me and her, I'm going to be the ultimate breadwinner. Right I'm now, I'm not working. I'm not working right now. My wife ain't had a job in years, but this year she's finishing up her student teaching. So they was like, we'll pay you. We was going to be straight regardless, but she getting a full motherfucking check now. Yeah. I'm like, cool. But my wife know she can make all the money she want, but when it fucking rubber reached the road, I'm going to take care of us. Yeah. So my wife know, God damn it, you going to jail, not me. I don't give a fuck if we had some molly, some exes, some cocaine, kilos of co crack, God damn it. My wife will tell, it's mine, officer. You lying. Take me to jail, sir. Because I know ultimately my motherfucking husband is going to be the one that can mm -hmm. goddamn matriculate out in this world for us. Hey, sister, I appreciate you coming in. Is there anything you want to say before you go? I just want to say to all the women that's on here, like, um, take a chill pill. It's not all, I mean, stay out of that nigga phone. First of all, stop causing yourself bodily harm because your esophagus go cave in when you find it. <laughs> and just be yourself. You know what I'm saying? Learn how to live in peace and just basically let that man cheat in peace. If you ain't ready to leave, leave him the fuck alone. It ain't even worth it. Leave him alone. You can't change nobody. You can't make nobody do what you want to do. And if 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 he complaining about what you look like, change it. Other than that, get the fuck on. And I'm a, I'm gonna piggyback off this before you go. I I, I want to eradicate the word cheat. Let each other live. Yeah. Let Just each let other live. live. It's not cheating. It's living. I don't believe in cheating. That's not a thing to me. It's like I want what I want when I want it. And if you don't like it, you can kick rocks. And if we can't come to that agreement, then we don't need to be together. We're not gonna work. It's not. A, I was not talking to my. I was talking to my two sons, my stepsons. I call them my sons. My wife's sons, one twenty three and one twenty. And you know, a couple of their friends was over, and we was talking, and I was giving them game about life, and they kind of just was laughing. And then they was like, for the first time, they asked me like, "So how you don't care about mama fuck another nigga?" My yes, sons sir. asked me that. I said, I don't care. It's just sex. I said, she had fucked y'all daddy and had y'all before she met me. <laughs> exactly, right? And then I was like, at y'all age, I said, if your homeboy fuck a girl and she easy and he tell you about it, she got some good hair, don't you try to fuck her? They was like, yeah. Mm -hmm. And so they was like, they started laughing and they realized it really ain't nothing. They put more on it than it, than it should be. They're, they're making it more. It's like, it was so funny for them to ask me, like, how do you, how do you don't care if our mama fuck around? I'm like, but she not fucking around. I don't understand how we don't understand that everybody going to do it. Fucking and the, uh, the fucking ones that don't do it can't do it. Cheating if to you me are is, a uh, woman that... I'm sorry, go ahead. Cheating to me is when you stop caring about the household. Cheating to me is when... Um, our bills are affected now. Like the lights is off, the mortgage finna get, the house finna get taken, or the car finna get taken. That's cheating to me. Because you, you flew in bitches out and ain't got money at home. Exactly. That's cheating to me, nigga. I don't yeah. give a fuck how you out here caking 
and the kid's tuition ain't paid. Now that's cheating. Get the fuck out and go get that tuition and then you come back. That bitch can't give you no money. You don't need to be sleeping with her. It is what it is. Now that's cheating. I appreciate you. Love hey, look, you well, I'm on your, hey, look, I'm on your goddamn cheat radar then. <laughs> I'm hey, on your... hey, 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 hey. It got some shit going <laughs> on, but don't worry. I'm going to fly a nigga out real soon. <laughs> Because you know I ain't paying for it. <laughs> I don't expect you to. <laughs> Appreciate you, sister. Bye-bye. <laughs> round and round we go. Oh, where we stop, nobody know. Round and round we go. Oh, how a nigga do this shit on the internet and this man is at home? Can't even... <sighs> ain't nobody... Ma ain't hey, listen, man. I don't understand. I don't understand what's wrong with these people. Uh, Aubrey, if anybody else want to come in, we're talking about women and men staying in contact with their ex. Uh, I remember this summer situation. My wife had a friend, and he works uh, in a certain business with air conditioning units. And uh, he has his own air conditioning unit business. And uh, I remember teasing her when she introduced me to him because it was a situation where I was going to this event and my wife was like, well, I'm going to hang out with my friend. We didn't tell each other where we was going. So I showed up at the event with my bitch. She showed up the event, same event with her nigga. So when we saw each other, we we honest. I'm like, hey, baby, I kiss her. Da, da, da. I'm like, this my bitch, such and such. She's like, well, this my friend, such and such. And I remember joking with her like, how you like that little short nigga? She was like, he cool, all this stuff that, that he like and what he do. And, you know, and I remember the AC unit went out in the house, up in the attic. And I didn't call some folks out here. That shit was about $5,500 or some shit. And we looking at our paper, and I'm about to, and some hit me in my mind. I said, hold up. Didn't you say that nigga you fucked with back in the day got his own AC business? She was like, yeah, I was waiting on for you to ask me to call him. I won't go volunteer. I said, bitch, you should have volunteered that for a week thing to pay. Call old boy up. He come over here. Yeah, they ain't lying. You need a whole motherfucking situation. And uh, this nigga was like, I can get this, 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 this. And I'm like, okay, air back on in three days. Fully, fully functional, new thermostat and all that shit. So I'm like thinking, God damn, uh, well, we ain't had to pay 5800 How much we going to have to pay this nigga? She was like, nothing. I was like, nothing? She was like, yeah, nothing. We ain't got to pay him nothing. Like, he been waiting for me to call him or want to see. I said, bitch, you better give me a goddamn pound. Bitch, you better give me a goddamn pound. I don't know what you did for that nigga. All I can do for a bitch is fuck good and cook some good food. Now, I can change tires and shit, but I ain't really no handy guy. I don't know how to fix shit and build shit like that. So, uh, you got to be a bad motherfucker to make me spend $5,000 or do $5,000 worth of work for you. I'm a cook by trade. I can, I'm a chef. I'm a chef. So, I'm goddamn like, you... You want me to come over and do a catering for you? No, nah, baby. That's a lot of work. Me and that man look at each other like we brothers. That's my brother. That's my bro. That's my brother husband. <laughs> I look at that nigga like a brother because he a real G. He a real nigga. If he like that woman enough, do something for her. Because I'm the type of nigga, if I like a woman enough, I'm going to do something for her. So, you know, let me hit this El Rochadere. If y'all like this content, somebody say, I got you on the Cash App. If y'all like this content, somebody say, I got you on the Cash App. Y'all would be amazed uh, me and my wife going to sit down and do a podcast where we have people, and we're going to talk about these stories. The things that we can tell y'all that we've done that y'all would think is some cruddy shit or y'all just wouldn't understand. When you look at these relationships, you don't understand the relationships that you want. Relationship goals are built on these things. 
You want to be like Hove and Jay-Z, Hove and Beyonce. Well, y'all know what Hove and Beyonce does. Y'all know about Hove and Beyonce? Beyonce told that nigga, I'll let you fly in my helicopter. I'll get your song played on a radio station. She ain't talking about Jay-Z. You think Beyonce ain't going to use that body she got? That's like this dick I got. No, no offense. You think I ain't going to test that motherfucker out? When I was a little boy, my mama said, boy, them, don't nobody want to change your pampers. I had a big meat as a child. Now I'm a grower, not a shower. Meaning when I was a baby, my dick probably soft was the size that it is now soft. So I had a big baby dick. But I got a little grown man dick. But when it get hard, that motherfucker big, that bitch grow exponentially. So as a little boy, I'm looking at my ding ling as a little boy. My ding ling bigger than everybody's. You know how friends pull your ding ling out? They be mad, smart thing, bigger than ours. I couldn't wait to motherfucking use that dick. Boy, what you talking about? I want to see the reaction. Oh, what? She acted like this. She said, Mama, I'm going home like, Mama, I made one cry. Mama, I made a girl cry. Mama, I made a girl wiggle. <laughs> First time I made a girl slide from under me. <laughs> I, what, what? You can make a bitch slide from up under you? First time I was hitting something from the back and she was, oh, and she fell down to the motherfucking flow. I said, you can make a girl run? I don't understand why you think that woman sitting there looking that pretty, talking to me on this live. Uh, my nigga said, I want a few brother, brother husbands when I jump the broom. It's an empire, group economics. Now, I'm not going to lay in the bed with no bitch <laughs> and a nigga. I'm not going to do that. But uh, it's an empire. It's an empire. I've been to swingers parties where I've seen women, women look at me and I said, and, I, and I'm like, God damn, she bad. And a nigga come up to me almost like we got some goddamn baseball cards. Be like, man, I saw your old lady. I saw you looking at my old lady. I said, that motherfucker look good, boy. He said, I, I'm looking at yours. And I said, God damn, bro. God damn. And we 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 laughing. And, and, and I'm saying to myself, ooh, I hope my goddamn wife goddamn run this train. Go with this for me. Not train meaning I hope wifey be like, like him enough. Or I might have been in a situation where I'm like, damn, I don't really like the girl like that, but my wife liked the guy. I take one for the team. Because I know one night it might be a bad motherfucker that I want. That's when we were younger going to swingers parties. See, that's why y'all like to watch Empire. And that's why y'all like to watch P Valley. And that's why y'all like to watch Jeffrey Dahmer rape people. Y'all motherfuckers is boring and you ain't never done nothing. You sitting around talking about, oh, I can't wait for Pete Valley to come on. You ain't never been to an orgy. I know you ain't. You ain't never had your pussy eaten by two men. You the type of nigga, you ain't never had three bitches, one sitting on your face, one sucking your dick, and, and, and fingering another two, three. You ain't never done no shit like that. Two women don't even make me smile no more. I done got so far in, in life that I said, I done had so much fun shit. Ain't nothing else for me to do but be gay. And I ain't finna be gay. Ain't nothing else for me to do but be gay or start fucking animals. I done walked all the way to the edge. I'm at purgatory. I'm a professional sinner. I've walked all the way to the edge. Oh, the edge of what? The edge of don't give a fuck. Right here. I'm talking about this a hole right here. And if I'm walking on a bridge, I'm right here. The only thing I can do to be more freakier or have some fun is to fuck a dog or, or do some gay shit. So man, I didn't been, I didn't, I didn't live the funness of love. Motherfuckers wish they could do that. Wish they can do that. I know men right now who are good dudes who will complain about their old lady. I can get on the phone and call that bitch and say, hey, I'm gonna have a little setup. They be like, I'll come. That bitch will come over here with a 
fucking ball in their mouth and have a chain on. And, and I can have a couple of my homies over here. She'll act a fucking fool for, for us, but not for her uh, husband. Because people lie so much. Oh, yeah. Somebody asked me, you want to come to a swingers party? I don't do that shit no more. You want to be a part of an orgy? I don't, I, don't, I don't need to do that shit no more. I'm, I'm more excited by something like that what's just happened. That pretty motherfucker right there on a one-on-one -on -one session says she'll fly me out. You're going to get your goddamn money's worth. I swear to God on the life, you're going to get your money's worth. And I'm the type of nigga, I love the truthfulness. Come on after you fly me out. Come on up here and talk about it. Tell the world what I done to you. Tell them what I done to you. Tell them what I done to you. Tell them how I made you feel. That's the type of, that's my reality show. Y'all, y'all want to watch some, some other reality. Now, what's the reality? Fly out, I put a fucking on you, a USDA grade A 100% fucking on you like you ain't never got. And you walk down to the notary office. You say, stamp me on the forehead, notarize me. Oh, he just put a notary republic fucking on me. Oh, Lord, take me down to the social security office. This nigga just put a SSI social security administration fucking on me. Take me to the USDA, FDA, food and drug. This nigga put a food and drug COVID vaccination fucking on me. That's what we, we need to live. Live life. Is there anybody else uh want to come on and speak on this subject? Okay, that go my girl Aubrey Lorray. Let me see. Can you... Uh, Aubrey Lorray, it said you couldn't come on because of technical issues. You might need to go out and come back in. I'm trying to say, in real life, we only live once. Why would you sit back? and be unhappy with no relationship because you're looking for the perfect relationship. But you got five or six ain't shit relationships going on. You got five or six ain't shit relationships going on. I'm trying to get a sister to come in who might want to speak on this subject. Or just, you got five or six ain't shit relationships going on. Let me tell y'all something. Uh, Charleston White said some of the realest shit about the Migos breaking up. And, and it's, it's such a situation. Let me see to my girl, Arbor. Okay, Arbor LeRae came back up. Okay, it says adding Arbor LeRae. I remember me and my wife. I said, you know, the easiest people to fuck is all your best friends and your cousins. What's up, sister? Talk to us. What you want to add to this subject? First of all, we're going to do the same thing. I don't know how long you've been following me. Uh, we giving me my praise reports. How you know me and how have I contributed to your growth in life? Well, I've been following you for a long time. Um, at least probably three years. Um, I would say just the openness of being honest with myself. When I first started following you guys with the blue dot, uh, you know, show that you guys would do. And then just, of course, dabbling into your other content and everything. So, uh, yeah, just, just being open, being honest. Um, that's what I've, that's what I've got, you know, from the situation. So, um, there, I don't think there's really much more than you can have in life, you know, than being open and honest with yourself. So that's pretty much what I've gathered from, being a follower but um what i wanted to talk about i know that we talked uh the topic was about keeping yeah exes. the exes talk about the exes because um, that's that's the main topic but we just we just having a good time go ahead right um so as far as like keeping in touch with exes all of that i think that's cool and everything but i have a question so go ahead. me being someone that is has been single now for a year like I want to have an open relationship and I have had numerous times that I have had conversations with men or been on dates with guys. Um, I'm currently dating someone. Um, but I, I'm, I don't know how, like I've, I've brought up, you know, like having an open relationship 
but it's like I can't find anyone that's like open to that. And so as far as, do you think it's just a matter of I'm just not choosing the right people or if there's like a certain way I should go about it? Because Well, okay, just, let me ask you your question. Okay, first okay. of all, it's like anything else in life. Uh, that's, let's take it out of an open relationship and say, I'm looking for a relationship with a man who likes to jump out of airplanes with me. You're still going to have to date a lot of people or date different people until you find the guy that say, yeah, I love jumping out of airplanes. Okay. You get it? So there, there's right. nothing you're doing wrong. Keep dating and telling motherfuckers what you want until you find the right one. Because, right. because anything other... Know. Go ahead. Oh, because I definitely feel like like my last relationship... Um, that was the issue at first. I was very controlling, like, no, I don't want you to mess with anybody. He started working on the road. He was messing around with other females and stuff, and I was very jealous of that. I thought that there was something wrong with me. Now, let me but ask you this. Let me time, ask you this. Okay. How did you know he was messing around on you? From first, it was just his behaviors. Mm -hmm. And then... There go ahead and tell. Go ahead and tell it. Go ahead. A, come on. There was there was a situation where one of the girls reached out to me, um, by Facebook and basically let it be known that you know she was messing around with him or whatever. And I still, you know, like I wasn't. I didn't want him to leave. Like I liked him being in the home with me and the boys. I liked that he was a good provider. He was very wonderful. Um, but it was like he couldn't. He couldn't. He. he I don't know. He just couldn't. He couldn't was doing stop a fucking. Lot of couldn't well, stop I fucking. I, and I, well, I, I and I told him because I had just became, like I said, I just started uh, following you with the whole blue dot, and I, I followed your content. When I was younger, um, I got in trouble when I was in the sixth grade with a report that I made. I was going to Catholic school, and it was about open relationships. Um, I've always thought that it, there was nothing wrong with it. You know, mm -hmm. I come from a family with the men. I always knew my uncles and my aunties' men and stuff like that. I knew what the men did, but I also yeah. knew that they took very good care of the women. I knew that they were all very, you know, well taken care of. And so I've always, I mean, I, I think that in the back of my head, and I, as a woman, I ain't gonna lie, like I was someone that at times I messed with people's men. And I knew it was a difference between them niggas that messed around with females and they was reckless and they didn't care. And then it was them niggas that be like, shit, we doing what we do. You better not say a motherfucking thing. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> to mess up my home. Yeah. And so that's why I had a problem with my ex was because he just, he was lousy with it. You know what I'm saying? Sloppy. And yeah. so, you know, I mean, and it was just other things financially that just caused us to end the relationship. But like I said, with that being said, I tried to introduce the whole open relationship, you know, let's both do what we do, but I can't ever, like, it seems like I always run into guys that are willing to be like, well, I will mess with people, but I wouldn't want you messing with nobody. Yeah, and, and, and you know what? Most guys are going to say that, and I'm going to tell you why, because men are insecure. See, the difference in men and women is, uh, and first of all, your, your man, he'll let you be do some dyke shit for him now. He'll let you mess with other girls and shit like that. But him, most right. men be insecure thinking somebody gonna pipe their old lady down better than him. You know what I'm saying? That, that's, that's, that's what most men are, are, are thinking. That man might pipe my old lady down or why she like messing with him, blah, blah, blah. <clears throat> but in real life, <clears throat> men don't give a fuck about that shit. A nigga say he do, but deep down, let's talk about trust for a second. Trust is a trust is a figment of our imagination. So say for example, uh how you say your name? I'm gonna use me and you first. How you say your name? It's Arbor. Barbara. Like like, Arbor. Bar like Barbara without the B Arbor. Okay, Arbor. Let's say me and you in a relationship. You could trust me and believe I would never do nothing, but that don't mean I won't. Vice versa. So trust ain't a thing. Everybody is always thinking their mate will fuck around. Some men just don't want to say you can. But he thinks she fucking around. He thinks she fucking around. See, a lot of what people don't realize, 
when you date on your level, security has to attract security. Meaning I'm secure. Ain't nobody right. going to pipe my wife down like me. You're not going to pipe her down like me. Because I've been piping the same woman so long, I know how to touch the bitch titties and make her come. I know her. <laughs> now, another nigga might either or do something great to her, but he ain't going to be able to do her like me. And if he did, so right. what? Congratulations. Good job. Hey, she, you had fun. But what you have to understand as a woman, and I'm giving you some real game, women don't make the decisions in shit anyway. Meaning, if you dating a guy, you don't decide when y'all going steady or get married. He decide that. All right. So part of the issue is is you trying to introduce some shit to a nigga. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I'm talking to you real. We talk real. We talk real. You gonna real. have to that's be probably what it is. That's probably what it is. But yeah, I wanted yeah. to. Be I wanted to be open from the beginning because, like you said, I'm that confident. Like I can be your woman, but yeah. I'm not going to be the least bit worried about what anybody does to you. I mean, I just want an open relation. I want an open relationship. I want a. I want my sons. I want us to have a family, you know. But I want. Yeah. I don't want any of the hindrances that I've had in past relationships to be the issue because I think that it was always about. Cheating. Or a cheating. Yeah. Now, the let me ask you something. Let me ask you something. Let me ask you something. The same question I asked Kani. Have you cheated on every nigga you ever been with? Actually, I haven't. I don't cheat. I don't cheat. I so, don't cheat. For, for, I've for, never for, slept with anyone else when I was with anyone. I, so, I would you, so let me ask you this. Hold on. So, Because we're going to get down to your mind and we're going to help you out. We're going to help you decide if you're right or wrong, meaning this, if you're not a cheater, why do you want to be in an open relationship? I'm going to tell you what I think, and then I want you to concur this for me. I think you want to give a man the opportunity to be in an open relationship because you know he's going to fuck around anyway, and you don't want to get hurt. You want to feel like, well, is that what it is? Break it. Well, you know, no, I think that I don't cheat, but I want it to. I have oh, okay. There we go. I have, okay, yes, I for the, in the last twelve years, I've dated three different men, and those are the only men that I've been with. But you wanted to, so so, so you so, know so, in the future. I, I so always, I always wanted something. Okay, I got I you. Something different. Yeah, yeah. I, so, I, I would want something different, and I feel this like woman said I cheated on both my husbands. <laughs> yeah, I like her. <laughs> yeah, I, I wish yeah. I could bring uh, Keisha in. That's that's Kanae's twin. I'm gonna see can I bring her in. Uh, if uh, in a minute, and I, if I can. But let me ask you yeah, something. And I, and so I don't basically, have to stay on long. I just wanted to see what you know. I don't have to stay on. Uh, so you. Can no, 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 no. I want to finish talking to you because because okay. you you set up a good point. Because there are some women that are say they'll be open just so they don't have to feel the pain of their nigga cheating on them. But like you said, mm -hmm. you've been in a relationship, three relationships in the last twelve years. And you didn't cheat, but you wanted to cheat. And these niggas were cheating, and cheating fucked up the relationship. Your last relationship, good guy in the house with the kids, everything was great. So what you're saying is, as you move forward in your next relationship, you would rather it be up front, like we both have the options so that I don't have to feel guilty if I do step out. You don't have to feel guilty. And uh, we can stay together. So that's the right reasons. Right. Those are the right reasons. I don't think a person should want to be in an open relationship just to be in one. China Carter, she spoke up, so we're going to try to get her in. I appreciate you, sister. Okay. You had your mask on like you at work. Is there anything you want to say before you go? No, I don't. Y'all have a good day. Well, let me say this one last thing to you real quick. Yes. What you do is be honest with the men you meet. Stop shooting your shot for an open relationship. You get it? That's like you asking a man to marry you. Meet men and then tell them as you meet them, hey, I'm the type of woman that I believe a man should live, a woman should live. We kicking it. But if we ever got into a relationship, I'm an open relationship type person. And then that guy can date you and fuck with you on true understanding and if y'all happen to fall in love and accidentally like relationships actually happen then he know what type of nigga you is woman you is that way if y'all never come to the 
straight up saying there's an unspoken knowingness of how shit gonna go down and then you just be careful i appreciate you sister Sounds like a plan. all right uh is there anybody else that want to come in uh china carter says i'm in an open relationship but i don't want to cheat and that's a good thing that that might be a woman just understanding and I, when, when she says, I don't want to cheat, I think she means I'm in an open relationship, but I don't want to have sex with another man. I'm thinking that's what she means. I don't, I don't think she means cheat, cheat, because if you're in an open relationship, uh, I guess it's no cheating if y'all open. But uh, yeah, is there anybody want to come in and speak on this subject? We got my sister, China. <laughs> I'm another all right. Y'all forgive me. <laughs> Another good God, there's some fine goddamn women uh on here, man. Uh so explain what you mean when you say you're in an open relationship but you don't want to cheat. Um basically I'm happy. I really don't um if anything, I don't need anything emotional or physical from anybody else, but I enjoy my man being happy. That so, makes so much sense. So for me, the open relationship is more so um I'm happy with him being happy. Yeah. You know, so. And you, and, 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 and you, I'm good. And so, and you also old enough to understand the way things are. However, the fact that y'all are open anytime in the future down the line, if you want it, met somebody or whatever, that's a discussion. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So you have that discussion. You're not worried about when your man leave or where he's going or what he's doing. And whether you know it or not, you ever thought about what our mama tell us, don't you be hanging on Lawson Street. That's where we're going. <laughs> I remember in, in relationships when I was supposed to be monogamous, I would get mad and go fuck off just because I wasn't supposed to. You know, it's when you have the opportunity to do something without repercussion, it takes away the... Uh, the fun of it. You know what I'm saying? Say, like I was gonna say that. So let me explain something to you. When we first started ahead. dating, he was dating other women, even though he knew that I was okay with it. But he was still lying about it. Okay? Yeah. So once I found out that he was lying about it and we, you know, we became truthful with each other and we realized, okay, so if this is what you want to do, you're gonna be truthful with me and let me know or whatever, whatever. Now he ain't cheating. <laughs> now he don't want to be with nobody. Yeah, he, he ain't because my ass it, all day, every day. <laughs> it takes away. That's what people don't understand. As a human, would you tell another human what they can't do? Who the fuck are you to tell me what I can't do? So that's what makes a lot of this shit go. Happy. It makes a lot. It's it's almost like uh. When I, when, when I first met my wife, I told her, I said, I ain't fucking just you. Now, sh we had a pseudo thing going. She said, that's cool, because I like newness. I like guys, and I like newness. I said, so you saying you're going to fuck with other guys? She was like more like you. Like, no, I'm not going to fuck with other guys. I said, if you're going to fuck with other guys, just say you are, because I don't think you're loyal if you don't. I don't give a fuck if you do or don't. Men don't trust women. We think all of y'all do the same thing we do. So you telling me you ain't fucking with no another guy does not make me think you're special. Right. <laughs> so we were in a situation where she, I guess she figured that made me feel like she was special. And then she did something I found out. I ain't say nothing for like eight years. Okay. Ain't no need to say nothing. I do what I want to do. You know, ain't no need. To, ain't no need to make her feel bad about what she done. Yeah. I don't want to feel bad about what I done. Nobody wants to feel bad about what you done. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? So the only reason I finally said something when she was like, "Are you sleeping with this girl?" and da 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 da, I was like, "Chris, I told you how I rock." But the fact that you asking me this means you're guilty. So let me go ahead and bring this shit from the past up. And you know that just. Okay, you know, I'm caught. Ain't nothing I can say. Let me just do right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so it's a situation where it's like we're living in a world where we all have been tainted to a certain extent. Our generation. How old are you if you don't mind me asking? I'll be 42 in December. 42 in December? God damn. I don't know what make these women think that 
that weaving shit. Look how young she look. <laughs> Let me say this as a side note to any women, women that may see this. To men, women look younger natural because the first time we realized that we like girls, her hair was like yours. As a little girl, the first time that we realized that we liked girls, she had an afro, some afro puffs, some braids, some locks, or something. Mm -hmm. Now, when you go back and look at pictures at you when you were 17, 18, 19 with that perm and that asymmetric bob, don't you look older oh, on them did, pictures yes. than you do now? Yes. You know why it's like that? Because... <laughs> When we see a little girl playing dress up, it looks like a little girl playing dress up. So those pictures of you at 20, you look older then because you was trying to play dress up some you won't. Mm -hmm. Now that you're 42, being who you are, you look fucking younger than you was when you was 20. Mm -hmm. These fucking women don't want good quality men. That's one. That's one. Yeah. <laughs> now, the reason these women don't want good quality men because they ain't shit women. I didn't want to say it, but I'm glad you did. Now, I'm going to get into it. I'm, I'm going to get a little deep because I got a beautiful sister on here. Uh, a ain't shit woman will dress like that to attract an ain't shit nigga because she know certain men don't want that shit. The same way a uh, ain't shit nigga ain't gonna roll up on you. Mm -hmm. He scatter you. Mm -hmm. That natural beauty and that natural face and that a uh, ain't shit nigga scatter you. <laughs> I get I'm more serious. people coming at me now with no makeup and my yeah. head and no lashes. Oh yeah, yeah, I yeah. Do. I forgot. I forgot to do something. Tell them how you know me and how have I changed your life. Oh, I know you from Facebook. Um, I've been invited to your crib a couple of times. I've met your wife and your family. I've spent a couple of um, occasions with you. It's your beautiful home. Had some of your food so you can cook. <laughs> yeah. And look, that's, that's one of the things my <laughs> wife always said. You better not cook for that bitch too early because she know I'm going to show off. Once I put that dick to you and cook for you, a bitch should be like, we ain't got to have sex. Can you just come by and cook, please? Yeah, you definitely cook. He Matter of fact, cook. I remember when you and, was um, over here, you ate a whole fucking lot of food. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but you can cook. You can, cook. You can definitely cook. Yeah. And so, um, I really started following you because you was on the poly stuff and, you know, the open relationship stuff. And ain't nobody with that. And I thought it was, you know, that was what I was, what I was on. So I've learned a lot from you with that. And I brought a, my current relationship. Like I said, I have not had any open relationships. My current relationship is an open relationship. That's what's up, sister. I'm I appreciate looking you. for a young lady to have my 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 um my boyfriend's baby because I can't have none. <laughs> hey, let's talk about that for a second because you know my 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 daughter is not by my wife. Mm -hmm. So you look so uh. That's a situation where I think my wife and my baby mama, that's a, such a beautiful situation. She was at the hospital with her, mm -hmm. with her throughout the whole pregnancy. Uh, you know, whatever jealousy or inner thing she felt, she never expressed it, blah, 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 blah. I want to speak on that since you said that. If you can, I don't understand how a person can know their man cheat or would give their man another woman. But if they can't have children, won't we'll give that man a child. No, so, I want my man to have a baby. He's forty. He just he did some time in prison, so he's just getting himself back together. And I want him to have a baby. So you had your tube tied. You got a kid, right? No, I don't have my tube tied, but I just think it's a little late for me. My baby's twenty one years old. It's just a little late yeah. for me. I don't want to have no. You like oh nigga? Yeah, I'll I let you have, have no. No, damn, I don't want to go no pregnancy you know? things. No, if we can find somebody like thirty, thirty five that can have his baby. But I yeah, and one thing I found out, one thing I found out that I didn't know when a woman hit forty. Uh, she has a fifty percent chance of having a Down syndrome child. Yes, I did not know that. Saying. I don't want. I don't want to yeah. have a high pregnancy, a high risk pregnancy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so beautiful. I got a homeboy who has a wife, and she can't have kids. 
and he didn't know when they got married and they found out that she can't have kids and she's just so depressed and he's gonna go through adoption and you know when i had my daughter he just came by he cried and cried and he don't want to adopt and he want to have a child and he married to this woman that already got two kids, but she had a hysterectomy, so she can't have no kids. And she will, and I'm like, man, if you don't leave that bitch in the dust, if that bitch don't let you procreate your seed and right. she got kids, I said, man, leave that bitch. And he love and they got a family. And he just, and I'm, boy, I'd call that nigga, you love the bitch yet? You can't love him if she doesn't can't allow love him. him to be complete. Like, you can't love him. If can't love him. Him. Can't can't love him. Can't love him. No. I, love I appreciate him. you, sister. When me and Chris start doing our poly podcast, I want to have you and your boyfriend on, and y'all might can uh, speak on some shit. Definitely. We'll love to. Good thing. Hey, let me ask you one last question. Yeah. Hey, look, since you got a nigga, do you still drink Hennessy out the bottle? All the time. <laughs> <laughs> Not as much, but I still drink my Henny out the bottle. I do. <laughs> All right, sis. I appreciate you. All right. Y'all have a good one. About fine, that motherfucker fine as hell right there, Jack Jack O' Lantern, and she fine in person, uh, fine in person. Uh, let me see, can I get my homegirl Keisha on here? Keisha, you got a mean stance. I'm looking at your profile. You got a mean stance. You, you oh. got a mean stance on that motherfucking profile pic. What's up, sister? I want you to do the same thing I'm asking every woman. It's like my way of getting my flowers because these people always want to contest me and go against what I'm saying. A lot of brothers, and they don't realize that I'm really creating the women that you would want to be with. Mm -hmm. So I want you to say how you know me and how have I changed your life before we get started? Go ahead. So I met you back in 2017, the first Birds and Bubbles, the original Blue Dots. <laughs> yeah, so I want to say 2017, um, the first Birds and Bubbles class, I joined that class, became a Blue Dot, and you have helped me um, manifest so many things in my life, like Laws of Attractions, boom, Jay taught me, you know what I'm saying? Not Abraham Hicks, I couldn't understand what she was talking about, the words she was using, but you broke it down. And ever since then, it's been on and popping. And and I would say this, so people, people may not know this, she's got a real estate business. I watched her in class saying, I'm gonna get my real estate license. Mm -hmm. I watched her take the class. I watched her hustle. Then I start watching Soul, 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 Soul. And I'm looking at this shit, and I ain't counting your pockets, but I'm like, I sold my million dollar house today. And I'm like, I know they know they get like six or seven percent. I didn't sell another million dollar boy. And I'm, and I'm like, so I watched you. I also watched you uh, go through marriage. Uh, I, I didn't know you was married twice or whatever. Yeah, so you, but you you at me with my second marriage. Okay, so you said something earlier. You said I cheated on both my husbands. Uh, <laughs> have you cheated on every guy you ever been with? Not every guy, just the ones I was married to. <laughs> so the ones that you didn't cheat on, that you, so the one that you didn't cheat on that you won't marry to, he could get the pussy today, then couldn't? He? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> of course, you call me right now. Bye, Jay. I got to go. <laughs> so, I want to understand how, because we had your sister. Are y'all identical twins or fraternal twins? We identical. Okay. I want to understand how, in this day and age, how women can come on and be as honest as you right now. Like, what did it take for you to get there and just, like, how is that possible? Because right now, some women are laughing at you. They saying they saying all types of shit about you. Not even realize you done had two husbands. So we know this. <laughs> you 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 can a nigga gonna wife you. You selling real estate. You are doing your thing. You're beautiful. How is it that you come to this conclusion? Because we know you fine ass light skinned girl. At some point, you was like, I want my own man. Blah, blah, blah. Nah, 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 nah. How do you come to this point? Where, and where are you at right now in this point? Are you in a relationship or what? No, I'm not in a relationship. Um, I am single right now. Um, 
when I was younger, yes, I did want that fairy tale, you know, uh, my Prince Charming, you know, um, my ex-husband, the one you know, he he sees me very well. Um, and the birds and the bubbles, you know, following you and Chris, because um, me and Chris actually met and we hung out. She's dope as hell. So just saying, y'all relationship, yeah. you know what I'm saying? That opened my eyes to a new perspective um, to be like, you know what? I mean, everybody cheats. The ones who don't, y'all boring. <laughs> Sex whack. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> <laughs> they cheating because somebody want that dick and they worried them for it. <laughs> <laughs> but I did. I used to be like that, you know. I want this fairy tale. I don't want him to be with nobody else but me. Um, but with my ex husband, when he cheated, you know what I'm saying? I found out. That's the way I handled that situation. I was so proud of myself. I was like, damn, he stepped out. Okay, bitch, you know. We was actually packing our bags. We were ready to take the kids to Disney World. So I'm in my walk-in closet packing my bags. And I'm like, hey, bitch, what you going to do? Are you ready to pack up these kids, leave, start over? You know what I'm saying? No. Kept it real myself. No. Okay. Well, bitch, no. He stepped out for a reason. Well, I wasn't. At the time, you know, we was going through a lot. I wasn't really caring about him, loving him, taking care of him. So, okay, he went and found it somewhere else. I had to take accountability. You know what I'm saying? So took the accountability Tell him, you know what? Of course, he denied it. It is what it is, player. You know what I'm saying? We're going to keep this thing moving and rolling. I ain't going to bring it up. Yeah, I'm not mad. I ain't going to get you back. <laughs> so you ain't got to worry mm -hmm. about that, you know? And I just went on by my, but I, I, you know, continued the marriage. Um, So that experience right there helped me to realize that she really ain't that bad. Um, It's just how you just look at it, how you pers uh, perspect, you know, um, Look at it. He was taking care of home, taking care of the kids. Everything was fine. Nothing was out of place. So, you know, she didn't contact me. You know what I'm saying? I ain't know about her. After the divorce, um, it came out that he was, you know, just doing his thing. And I was like, oh, well, thanks for keeping away from me because, you know, at least you had enough respect for me not to bring, you know, the drama to the house. You know what I'm saying? You kept them in check, kept them in their place. So, hey, you know, thank you. And kept them So, moving. at this point, your next relationship, Mm -hmm. Where are you as far as uh, I'm, would you consider an open relationship or do you still want a fully monogamous relationship? Like, where are you at as as in, as far as moving forward in life? Moving forward in life, like the man I choose to be with, um, we have to be honest with each other. If this is what you want to do, be real with me and tell me that. You know what I'm saying? Don't tell me one thing and then do another. Or let's not agree. Like the last relationship I just left. Um, he was honest with me, you know, I love women. Okay, cool. Well, let's set some boundaries. You know what I'm saying? You love to have multiple women. Here's the, you know, the boundaries, X, Y, Z, you know what I'm saying? Keep him in perspective. He didn't do that. You know what I'm saying? So, and he got sloppy with it, you know, and it came knocking on my door. So, and he wasn't taking care of home. You know what I'm saying? Um, finances wasn't straight. Um, you know, so that's where I feel like that's my issue. If home ain't taken care of, you ain't got no time to be playing. You know what I'm saying? Now, I'm, 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 I'm not going to say anything about the brother because I don't know the brother. Mm -hmm. But let's just be real. Any and this, and this is being honest. I just have to be real. With the money you make in real estate, mm -hmm. fine as you is, mm -hmm. and you letting a nigga tell you he like women, mm -hmm. what make a motherfucker not just tell the truth then? <laughs> I said the same thing, you know, and I would ask him, you know, because he would always be like, well, just come to me, you know what I'm saying? Like, if you got a question, ask me, don't snoop. Okay, I asked. You still lying. Nigga, I'm asking you. I'm trying to give you a chance, you know what I'm saying, to just keep it real and we can move forward, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but I think a lot of niggas' insecurity, they feel like, I think a lot of niggas feel like if my woman know I'm cheating and I, and I admit it, she going to cheat back on me. No, he knew he had me, you know what I'm saying? Because he, I mean, at first, he was like, you know, yeah, you can do you too, you know what I'm saying? Just put some space in between, you know what I'm saying? Like, if we're going to link up, you know what I'm saying? Make sure some days in between there. But then it turned into, nah, I want you to myself. I don't want nobody else to get that, woo, woo, woo. But, I mean, he was laying, 
laying it so good, you know what I'm saying? I ain't want nobody else. You know what I'm saying? Loving me so good. Taking That's how I be. You know so I ain't want nobody else. And I knew he had um, one other woman in particular, you know what I'm saying? I didn't care as long as he was taking care of me, loving me right, you know what I'm saying? I'm good. Hey, but then once he started getting sloppy with it and, you know, the home front wasn't looked out for, play it. Hand me your business first, you know what I'm saying, before you go outside to play. <laughs> Golly, it's, it's, it's men on this timeline right now or that's going to see this that, that's like because as men we know we want a woman off looks mm -hmm. when we see a woman that we know we want off looks we don't care about her past what she's done or what she do I know I wanted Chris off looks personality ain't nothing my wife my wife can't do no wrong mm -hmm. Chris can't do no wrong Chris can't I joke I joke all the time with her. Well, not all the time. I've made a joke. I said, shit, if we get AIDS out this bitch, goddamn, we're going to have to goddamn share the Madison, goddamn. It. You know what I'm saying? And it's it's it's, it's a joke, but we, we protect ourselves, strap up. I, I almost got, you know, I say, look, we're we going to strap up with each other just in case I want to get reckless out here. <laughs> but we're going to strap up at home just in case I want to have a reckless day, goddamn. But I might want to raw dog time out this bitch. But, uh, you know, it's it's just so funny how situations and kids be born mm -hmm. in situations and families are broken up because motherfuckers just can't be honest about the things that mm -hmm. everybody mm -hmm. already know exactly. any fucking way. Keep it real. Hey, though. fellas, <laughs> I want to say this to the fellas. Fellas, y'all boys hit me with the goddamn cash app because we done had some beautiful women on here telling some real stories, man. Uh, wow. I don't, I mean, I mean, I, I ain't gonna front. I ain't gonna front. I know your, your ex through Facebook. Like I know you through Facebook. Mm -hmm. You know, I like the guy. Mm -hmm. I really like the guy. You know, <laughs> but you were on my goddamn radar at one time, like real goddamn radarish. Like really, 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 really radarish. You know, but, uh, you know, I saw your situation and uh, but you back on the goddamn radar. Hey. You know what I'm saying? You're on the goddamn radar. Beep, 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 beep. I appreciate you, sisters. Is there anything you want to say before before you before you get out of here? Just to the brothers, just keep it real. You know what I'm saying? That's all sisters be wanting. You know what I'm saying? We love y'all dirty draws. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? If we ask you a question nine times out of ten, we already know. Just keep it real. You never know. We might be like, okay, babe, well, can you just do X, Y, Z so we can keep it moving forward? That's it. But, you know. <laughs> well, you know, you had already met Chris, so y'all already cool. So yes, Chris life is, is life. Well. Love is life and life is love. <laughs> I appreciate you, Keisha. Have a good day. Bye-bye. Well, family, we done had a wonderful show. Uh, is there anybody, any brother want to come on? Any brother who has that sharing spirit of just living? Uh, anybody have anything they want to speak on about the exes before we get out of here? We're going to get out of here. They identical twins. Lord have mercy, Jesus. Now, I ain't going to lie, and this is just me being real. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't smash some sisters before in life. I'm not saying that about y'all. I'm not saying that about I'm not saying that about y'all. I'm not saying that about y'all. But oh uh, golly, identical twins. My little sisters are twins, and I know niggas, I would heard niggas, and I'd be like, my god damn. But uh yeah, that's sister love. You know, I didn't I didn't definitely and this is the thing that men don't realize. That woman just said some real shit. She said, we love y'all dirty draws. That woman said, we love y'all dirty draws. That woman just said, when a woman got you, she got you. Now, I know as a man, that's why I said be honest. You get more with honesty. I know as a woman, I mean, as a man, I've dated women. And uh, saw their sister look at me or their friend, and I was like, "Yo, what's up?" Uh, Kanique said, "Hey, y'all ain't saying hey. Y'all got the nice emojis. 
God damn. Boy, I be make my boy. I might be a bad motherfucker. I might be making something happen. Boy, I know I ain't making some goddamn happen on this motherfucker right now, live, live in the flesh. Goddamn it! Next time I'll come up, uh, Chris gonna cut my hair and shave my beard tonight. I'm gonna come back on tomorrow and goddamn see. Can I? I'm gonna be. Hey, look, I'm gonna be cute for the twins tomorrow. Twins, I'm gonna be cute than a motherfucker for y'all tomorrow. Uh, but yeah. People don't realize if you just be honest, and this 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 is not me bragging on my life. If you just be honest, if you just be honest, uh, let's talk. Let's let's talk turkey for a second. All right, all right. I'm gonna ask the crowd a question, and I want everybody to answer this real quick. In the art of having sex, how many times do two people? Have sex before the woman let the woman, the man take the rub off. That nigga say he want to watch. Hey, bro, you my homeboy. You can be there, my nigga. Goddamn, my niggas, my my nigga, my nigga. You can be there, homeboy. You can you can goddamn be there. You know what I'm saying? She. Uh. My point is, is this. The honesty that we need to have out in this world, the honesty that we need to have, there you go. Two or three times, she said four for me. I'm going to make a point. Modern day nephew, two if she likes you once. Okay, Hop says you already know. I say three. I say it's a cardinal rule, three. So if we know this, we all need to be pulling our phones and checking motherfuckers' tests before we fuck. If we know this, now listen to what I'm saying. Chiquita says four or five. I say three. The reason I say three, but people have different ways. The women, some women say two or one. This is the point I'm making. I don't want my battery to go dead. Uh, let me make sure my battery ain't going dead. This is the point I'm making, real quick. A few times, okay, Cassandra says a few months for me, sorry. And that's cool. She said a few months, but shit, y'all might not fuck but seven, eight times in a few months. But the point is, is this. Let's be real. A woman gonna dry out with a condom, especially if a nigga dick a certain size, filling that pussy up. That condom rubbed them walls. Uh, Pamela said, I simply asked for them to go to the doctor. So but however you get down. But what I'm saying is, a woman loves when a man come fast on her. She might want him to get back hard and fuck her later that night or a couple of hours later. But when a woman make a nigga nut fast, she lay down, oh, this pussy is so good. I tap that nigga out. So after you fuck a woman with a rubber a couple of times, she know the pussy's quality is going down. She said, okay, it's time to let this nigga pull this rubber off so he can really get this good pussy. Then before you know it, after she's been fucked him raw a couple of times, she tell him you can come in this pussy because she want him to get him the best experience while he fucking. Do y'all understand where I'm going? A woman will let a guy fuck her with a condom two, three times. Then she let him take the rubber off so he can enjoy the pussy. After he didn't pull it out of her two, three times, she kind of say, hey, bust in this pussy, baby. It's her saying, Take the ultimate experience. As a man, I know if a woman will do that for me, if I say, what's up with your sister? She'll let me fuck her sister too. Why? Because she want me to have the ultimate experience. That girl, Keisha, just said she, uh, no, not Keisha, the other girl, uh, sister, uh, China. She said, I don't want no other man, but I want my man to be happy. So, I have always been that guy that says, let me, let me hit your system. And if they like you, they're going to let you do it. And she's going to go to her sister and be like, yo, uh, my man want to fuck you. And the sister going to say, she's going to say, girl, stop playing. Do that shit for me. And sister going to say, girl, I got you. Shit. We sisters. Best friends, homegirls, homies, all this shit. This, that's how this shit go. You got to be a top tear man and know this. There's a lot of men like, for real? For real? For real? When I first met my wife, I said, them best friends of yours, them the easiest ones for me to knock off. 
how we've been friends 20, 30 years. I said, no, the reason it's like that because your friends have different jealousies, envies. So when your friend, y'all could be best friends forever and she genuinely love you. But the fact that your man wants her, that make her feel on your level. This is the taboo shit that feels good. This is the honesty I'm telling you. Really, I want to fuck the people around me because it's going to be better. We know each other. I remember that song, you're my little secret, and that's how we should keep it. Don't never let me go, never let me go. Let me, let me go, no, 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 no. Keisha said, yep, my other sister came to me saying how good dude was and how I should experience it. Yep, that was her saying, girl, my man want to fuck you, and I like him so much, I will let him do it if you do it for me. We got to be honest. The honesty is the best policy. I've had a beautiful day on this live right here. I've had a beautiful day on this live right here. I got some in the vortex. Identical twins are in my vortex. I want to examine them. Do they look just alike? You know, they, oh, did she got the butterfly. She, I want to smell. Oh, y'all smell just alike. Boy, that's, let me tell y'all, boy. And women, women, if you can, get you two brothers. Get you two brothers. Me and my brother, I done had bitches like, what's up with your brother? I said, you want to, oh, I called my brother, hey, brother, one of my girls got them, my brother said, Shh. me and my brother, now, now I, I ain't really no trained guy, but I'm fucking the same room with my, my blood brother. She, she want to be trained by me and my brother? Hey, bro, come on over here. Now, I kind of be a little embarrassed because my brother's 5'7 and 5'9 and them niggas' hammer's bigger than mine. Look, that girl says she had twins before. So this might need to be a goddamn Facebook after dark combo. But family, I appreciate y'all. Them exes gonna be in the picture. If we could just tell the truth, man. Y'all hit that cash out, the master teacher. I appreciate y'all. Uh, Demia Clark said, my sister wanted to fuck my man before, but I'm not going to lie. I wasn't having it back then. So it's like now it's a different story. Man, I'm gonna tell you what it is. Man, we up in them 40s now. We up in them 40s now. We up in them 40s now. I'm finna go lie down in the vortex, dream. I'm probably gonna go beat off at the idea. I'm playing with y'all. I'm fucking with y'all. Y'all be good, family. CC, I'm ready for my flight. Y'all be cool. And so you know you in there, cause you, nigga, you gonna, you gonna pay for everything. My nigga, my nigga, Buying them goddamn twenty thousand dollar shoes and goddamn Rolex watches, Nick Enzo, you and Hop, y'all niggas is everywhere. Y'all niggas got the money. My nigga Mike in there for GP, nigga. Woo! <laughs> you know I'm finna go do it. You might get nasty and send him a screenshot. You might get nasty and greet him all greased it up and stand him up and set the toothpaste pack beside it so they can see how big the media is compared to the toothpaste or the remote control. Cinema old nasty picture. Oh! <laughs> Y'all be good, fam. Look, I'm having a good time. I hope nobody don't feel disrespected. Uh, that nigga said, wine for me. Listen, I hope don't nobody feel disrespected. And, uh, you know, ultimately, we having a good time. And I, them sisters are beautiful women, good girls. And uh, I hope don't nobody feel disrespected. We all having a good time. Uh, and I'm just playing. Unless you're going to do it. Y'all be good, family. Appreciate you.